Okay. Hey, welcome back to the Gemini channel. My name is Laura. If you're new to the channel, I'm going to do a general message for Gemini. Know that energy is fluid. Rules could be reversed. Interpret the message as it best resonates with you. Also know on my channels, I like to dive deep within the reading. So I do look at everything, but we take more time to look at the spiritual blocks, the shadows, and see how they play in those karmic themes. Because a lot of times we're not, we're dealing with people that are imbalanced and when you deal with wounded people, you have the potential to become wounded, obviously. And so you there's many different realities that play out at one time. That's spiritual law, that nothing is determined. No, no one can really predict your future. I mean, people do, and we resonate with it, but there's many different ways a situation can play out there's many different realities that play out at one time your level of consciousness depends on your core beliefs and your core beliefs determine your habits and your behaviorisms and that is what determines the level of consciousness that you are going to manifest so when you're dealing with a person that's toxic does that mean that you're toxic? No, there's only two energies, love and fear. So anything that's derived from fear means that you can attract, potentially attract someone that's really narcissistic. You can attract a sociopath. You can attract really evil energy and you're not an evil person. You've just gone through a few experiences that were traumatizing. And when I say traumatizing, I'm talking about psychologically and emotionally mainly, sometimes physically, but mainly in relationships, there's a lot of gaslighting when you're dealing with someone that is imbalanced. You're dealing with someone that lies a lot. You deal with somebody that cheats, where all of a sudden you feel like you're in the need to have eyes in the back of your head that all of a sudden you're living in survival mode. And when you live in survival mode for long periods of time, you form habits and behaviorisms for your survival. Unfortunately, when the relationship is over, you don't just forget about those behaviorisms and habits. What happens is you bring them into the next relationship and we all go in and out of consciousness. And so, Dealing with people that trigger, well, then there's automatic reactionary behavior. And a lot of times that is sabotaging behavior. So what helped you survive one time will potentially be the spiritual block that prevents you from being able to manifest love, being able to manifest financial abundance or anything else that's in alignment with your heart's desire with abundance right because you have too many blocks spiritual blocks or shadows and those are parts of of us that we've detached from that we've disassociated from so understanding why your person does what they do understanding why you attract who you attract allows you then to implement new behaviorism so you can quantum jump into the new reality a reality that's more in alignment with where you want to be who you want to be not with the wounds of the past now again the readings have a therapy style so they're a little it's they're always a, a little bit longer so if you don't like long readings this is not going to be your channel if you're someone that wants to know why you attract, what you attract and why your person reacts the way that they do to you and what spiritual significance it has, relevance to you and how you can transmute the negative blocks to quantum jump into the reality that you want to experience, then this is going to be the channel that you want to be on now anything of any importance or relevance to the channel you can find in the description box now I, there's always an opportunity to enter into winning a free reading with me you gotta like the video subscribe to the channel and write the word the video in your comment bar the word in the video is always the underlining energy that tells me why everyone's doing what they're doing now i have called a few people and no one has you know come to get their reading and this channel is relatively new 
But um, I know I have a few people that are on this channel that follow me on my other channels that are a lot busier. That's my Virgo channel and my Scorpio channel. So if you're dealing with a Virgo or a Scorpio, you definitely want to check out those channels. You could be the cross watcher. I also have an all Zodiac channel and you can find the links again in the description box. If you're someone that's in need of shadow healing well you definitely want to check out my psychic soul healer shadow coaching program there i incorporate inner child healing shadow healing reparenting and all the healing modalities to help you heal the effects of trauma so that you can again create the life and the life experiences that you want to have now again and that by the way that subscription is only seven dollars and 99 cents a month i have two classes a week. I do regular live streams. Well, I will be doing them a lot more regularly now that, you know, I was in transition. My husband just passed away. So I'm um, actually coming out of that. And I feel like by the end of the month, beginning of next month, I will be on track. All right. So let's see what the underlining energy is. So the underlining energy is always on the first card that I pull out. And this gives you an opportunity if you want to enter into winning a free reading with me that you have to write that word in your comment bar. The underlining energy of the video tells me why everyone's doing what they're doing. It's what's hidden from us. It's the shadow always creates an illusion. The person create a persona they wear a mask that's how you know that they've detached however the wound is what determines what the mask looks like okay so let's see again so if you want to enter into winning a free reading with me you gotta like the video subscribe to the channel write this word that i'm about to pull out in your comment bar, you'll know if I chose you, if I wrote the word winner underneath. If I did, you'll reach out to me through my email. You'll find again in the description box, along with all the other important information. Tell me the days, times, channel you found me on and the days and times that work for you is what I'm trying to get at. And I will pick a day and send you a link. Now, all readings are done live they're done live on youtube i believe in spiritual law what's best for you you get a free reading what's best for me i expose the channel what's free for the collective and that's anyone that finds the the reading that resonates with it because again they're healing style so the word of the video is guilt we've been getting this a lot so i'm actually going to pull another one next to guilt because again, a lot of times when you do readings every day, the energy doesn't really change. Especially if someone's going through a dark night of the soul. Especially if they're going through major tower moments in their life. Then you know that the energy is going to stay the same. It's going to be, again, the person that needs to hear the reading the most to understand so even though this person's going through it i feel like you're dealing with somebody that's going through a very turbulent time and they're not emotionally intelligent if you were to meet this person now you would feel like they were a totally different person than the person that you were dealing with the person that you were dealing with in the beginning was very arrogant they were an asshole they just you know believe that they believe that they were God's gift, you know? And like I said, they were a, an asshole. They didn't really give you the time. They didn't appreciate you for what they now appreciate you for. I feel like when they met you, they wanted surface. Here for a good time, not a long time. They focused more on the physical and not the emotional. So they know that they didn't give you the time. And they feel guilty about that because now they wish you were in their life because, again, they're going through a difficult time. And this person, again, is not spiritually evolved. Again, because it's not like they were looking for you before. They look for you now because 
again, they're in a tower moment, but this person's not emotionally intelligent. So it's like they actually don't know what to do. When really a confident person wouldn't really even care whether or not you were going to talk to them, whether you weren't going to talk to them, they would just pick up the phone. They would just find a way to talk to you. This person can't seem to get out of their own way because they're focused so much on what they did, the person that they were, how you perceive them, how they're perceiving you now. And so again, I feel like things are happening in this person's life. However, you are definitely in that mix of regrets that they have. And that's why they feel guilty because they know that they're the problem for their life. This person wants to seek some sort of spiritual guidance. They want to find a counselor. They want, they've been working on themselves, but they want to know why they do what they do. They don't understand why they do what they do. I feel like they've never been put in a position with someone that didn't react negatively to their bullshit. You didn't react. You just detached. And I feel like this person thought that you were like there still the whole time, to be honest with you. They had a big head. They had You had a connection. I feel like you put this person's like mind at ease because you knew that they weren't emotionally intelligent so that you knew that they weren't going to be able to communicate. They had a hard time. So I feel like you tried to make it easier for them, which by the way, there is a handicap for them that they purposely have because other people have done the same exact thing. So this person knew what you were going to do. And instead of them being appreciative, it's like, I feel like they took that information and they took advantage of it. And that's why they feel guilty. So let's see what this person did, Gemini. I mean, we kind of see already that they didn't give you any time. Okay, so they, again, never really being transparent, always scheming and be, always feeling like they had one foot in, one foot out, always feeling like they had other options, letting you know that they had options, Talking to you, having a full conversation with you just to find out information. And then they would say things almost like to dangle the carrot to be like, yeah, well, you know, we should go away on vacation or we should go out on the boat or we should, you know, do go on that hike. We should. And you say, yeah. And them saying, oh, good. I know that you still like me. OK, I can put you like on hold. I can, I, I'll get back to you. I don't really know if I really want to be with you. It's like, I like the fact that you like me though. That's the energy. So really immature scheming because they didn't really know what they wanted. Immature. And I feel like you felt like they were ruled by anger because it's like you question their behavior. It's not like you went along with all of this. You didn't. This person feels guilty because you're not in their life. I feel like you took one look at what they were doing and you were like, I don't, I don't feel like you're being transparent with me. So I feel like you're hiding stuff. So either you're in a connection with somebody else or you're talking to multiple people. Either way, I'm not going to like, I'm not going to invest that much into you and this person watched you invest more into yourself and they actually became angry because you didn't do what they assumed that you were going to do and it's you know it's again like they wanted you to give up your power like I said and you weren't doing it and meanwhile if you go to talk to them about what your emotional needs were how they were making you feel, they felt as if you were, you know, making them give up their power. Like they were like making it like you were trying to take away their freedom. This person projected, deflected, they did it all. They gaslight, they gaslit, they did everything to avoid. And that's why you didn't stick around. Most people, again, 
stick around, believe it or not. This person normally goes for lower hanging fruit. They it it or I shouldn't say that they normally they go to anybody, but it's they a pursue they assumed that you were lower hanging fruit. And I'm not saying like they thought that you were low class. No, they thought that you didn't know your worth. That's what they thought. Because like no one really is lower hanging fruit. You know, it's just people that, you know, don't know their worth. Like will, you know, give too much of their time, too much of their energy to the wrong people. And at one time you gave too much to this person and they thought that you were very naive because they were talking to other people and they knew and they knew that they weren't giving you anything. They knew. So, and you were always making time for them. And so I feel like you were giving time. So you obviously wanted it back. And then this person was like, whoa, whoa, what are you asking me? You know, like you're like, I, I'm allowed to talk to who I want to talk to. Like you weren't saying that, but you had a right to know what you wanted to know. And this person kind of wanted you to be constrained and they wanted to do whatever the hell they wanted to do. And then on top of it, it's like, I feel like because this relationship was so toxic, you would talk to your friends and I feel like sometimes your friends would influence you. I also feel like this person, it depended on their mood, to be honest with you. Sometimes they would want to hang out with you. Sometimes they wouldn't want to hang out with you. Sometimes they would, they were very moody. And, and because they're very moody, I, I'm feeling almost like, you know, they, they they could talk to somebody and, and talk negatively about you. You know, like, oh, but this girl that likes me or this guy that likes me, they're, you know, they're asking me for too much time. They're asking me for too, they want me to be their boyfriend. They want me to be their girlfriend. You know, when really it's like they're bragging to their friends, they're, they're letting their ego guide them. And, and, and with that, you know, people give their opinions. And then this person's not a strong person because a strong person doesn't play games. They don't want you to give all their energy and, and, and then, you know, not give anything in return. That's not a sign of a healthy person. That's a sign of an imbalanced person, someone that's very greedy, someone that's very selfish, someone that's afraid of commitment, someone that has avoidance style. And so, of course, they're not strong within themselves. So they have conversations. And sometimes it's not even bad mouthing. I feel like this person does brag, though, that you like them. They might not name your name, but they'll say, oh, this girl that's really into spirituality or this guy that's in finance or this guy that owns his own business or this girl that's a model, whatever it is, it's like they're whatever you do, they brag about that. And then to kind of like like feed their ego. Like I said, it just fed, fed them. And they love the idea of you having feelings, but then they're not strong. And then they're dealing with people on their vibration. That's not a high vibration. So they're easily influenced. You know, because this person gets very jealous. They get very triggered and birds of a feather flock together. And so I feel like they're with people that are on a low vibration that are, you know, don't really want to see them do that well, you know, and they get, get influenced. They get influenced. They get bad advice. And then they listen to that advice because they're not strong to, to be, you know, on their own. And when I say on their own, I'm talking about to stand on their own two feet without needing anyone else's opinions, anyone else's advice. If someone cares about you, they have feelings for you, they don't need to play all these games. And the reason why this person needs to ask everybody for their advice, whether that's their mother, their father, their sister, their friend, whoever it is, it's like, 
they're they're doing it because they're not strong within themselves. They don't know what they feel. They didn't give the time. They wanted you to give time. That's so how can they know anything? That's the thing. This person doesn't build an emotional, uh, transparent connection. They're, they have a second chakra in balance. They have trust issues, but they're the problem because trust is something that's acquired over time. This person doesn't want to put the time in. You know, they act like if you're asking for them for time, that it's a big deal. But then they want you to be on their beck and call. Like it's a real one sided, and then they're not strong within themselves. And of course that they're not. So they create a lot of illusions. They want you to perceive their life is a certain way that it's really not. They don't let you come into their life really 100% because of that. Now, were they conscious of that? I'm not sure. But I know that this person, like I said, loves the idea of you. Loves the idea of you. But they're not mature enough for you. And I feel like your friends care about you. So I feel like every time you talk to them about your person, or maybe you don't, for some, you don't even anymore because your friends are like, what's that? this person? I don't even want to talk to you about them because they've done nothing. They do nothing but hold back. They want their cake and eat it too. And, and you know that. And again, it triggers your abandonment issues. And that's really what it is. This person wavers in and out because they want to hold their spot. But they're only giving you breadcrumb. They're not really giving anything. And sometimes not even a breadcrumb. I feel like they play a lot of mind games and create a lot of drama to keep you put, to fuck with your head. It's like, this is how this person has figured out how not to give anyone anything emotionally. They just create a lot of fuckery, meaning like triangles, talking to other people, not holding back, being vague, not being transparent. Um, I feel like even some for some, they use their body a lot. And I feel like your boundaries, like you try to create boundaries with this person for your own protection. Like, and that would be, I don't like, like, I really don't want you to date me and a thousand other people. I don't want you to waver in and out of my life. I don't want you to like, you didn't want anyone in your life that was going to create toxicity. And anyone that makes you overthink and triggers you emotionally just because they don't really know what they want. However, they don't want you to go anywhere. That's that's what I'm seeing here. So your boundaries were continually crossed. Always a little bit like, I'm going to do it, which is very disrespectful. And that's what you felt. Again, with their gaslighting. And then all of a sudden, they're the victim, right? It's like when really it's like you have too much trauma and it's it's activating my trauma. And that's really what I feel like. You being with this person triggered your abandonment issues and you have a lot of trauma around that where some of you grew up with an alcoholic parent and then the other parent was so codependent on fixing that you know, alcoholic that they weren't there for you. Then some of you didn't have a parent, you know, because they both worked all the time and they didn't have the time or the energy or the emotional bandwidth. Others of you, your parents were going through a divorce, so they emotionally couldn't be there for you. So there's a lot of reasons for abandonment. And most of the time, our parents don't mean to do it. They do the best that they can with what they have to work with. I should say all of them don't. They just, even the ones that you know that do, like I know my mother purposely did certain things, but because she was traumatized, she didn't know. And that's what spiritual disease is. 
it's one where you're like gaslit to the point where you don't you built so many masks you don't know who you are and we you don't know who you are so you don't like the parts of you that you don't know and so you create illusions and masks and so I'm feeling like some of you grew up with that type of trauma and this person is mirroring the same trauma that you grew up with. And it's triggering your trauma to come out for you to look at the situation because that's what it is. Because you'd be like, why the hell are you telling me a story about a person that wants to hold on to me, but doesn't want to give me anything? And why would the universe bring me something like that? I actually got on one of my channels. I'm tired of this. It's always the same thing. And there's never any solution. There is a solution, but the solution is not that that person's going to change for you. The solution is that you change. That you change. And when you change, you change the dynamic of the relationship. And how would you change? Well, to look at your trauma. And to look at what the, the, this person mirrors is that there's not, they're not capable. It's like they have so many blocks. They have so many issues with themselves that they have to address. They have abandonment issues. That's why they want to trigger abandonment, but they have abandonment issues because they don't like who they are. They're angry. They're angry. So now that you're in separation from this person and they are in grief, because like I said, partially I believe is because you're showing them a different narrative than what they thought. They thought again that this was going to play out a lot differently because it normally does. They usually are, you know, someone that's able to get what they want. And so if they, and they misjudged you. So they're in grief mainly because of I feel because of that, not saying that this person doesn't have feelings, but let's look at the hidden truth because there's a lot of mix in here. And that's what happens when you're dealing with someone that's spiritually sick. It's that they sabotage the connection all the time and they're actually mean and abusive. It's like they get jealous of the people that they're with. They pretend to like support them and, and be their biggest cheerleaders, but they, they're not, they're not. They'll actually sabotage a um, an opportunity because again, they continually sabotage their own life. So they can't be with someone that's gonna do better than them because they're not healed. So again, what better way to fuck with you, but then to be in and out of your life you know, to play head games, to gaslight, to keep you up in your head, then you're no longer present. And then you're living that reality. And that's what this person thought that was going to happen. And you're like, and they liked me. It's like their way of like is control is to own. You know, again, this person doesn't have a sense of who they are. I hope that you can forgive me one day. So like I said, they are in grief, but it's almost like, I don't know how they expect that to happen. You know, it's like they're they're not, not without a conversation. Whoop. Two fell out, no, two or no, just one. And that is, I remember every detail of that day, which was the last time right sorry my little puppy is on the floor <laughs> he wants to play cards okay and then it says i bury myself in my work to forget you so this person's kind of like stuck in their ego they're in regret they have guilt but they're not doing anything to fix it. I feel like they're fighting it. What the friggin' bug?
I want to be more than friends. See, that's the thing. This person wants to be more than friends, but they doubt. They doubt quite highly that you are going to be with them. You're not going to like, and that's really what it is. So this person is like, doesn't really know how to come back to this situation because they see that they ruined the connection. It's not that they don't have guilt. If they didn't care, there wouldn't be any guilt. But I feel like this connection is making them, it actually, they, what they wanted to happen to you is what actually backfired to them. They have abandonment issues. That's why they did what they did to try to keep you hooked. You left, you triggered their abandonment issues. They don't really want to look at their shadows is what I'm seeing. And what I see also is that you wind up looking at your shadows. You wind up looking at your trauma. This person is kind of like stuck in their trauma because they have, they've got to want to, they've got to want to do the work. And you know that a person is, wants to do the work when they don't form attachments. I feel like attachments are like, are not just people that are feeding this person's ego. And even though they're not dating the people, they're still getting something emotionally and they're not giving to you. They're holding back. Because, hey, well, I, it's not a sure thing. So because it's not a sure thing after I fucked the whole relationship up, I don't really know how to approach this because you can tell me to go screw up. And then I don't want to live that reality. So this person stays like imbalanced because, again, they doubt quite highly that you're going to take them back. They know that they look exactly like a narcissist and now they have a lot of anxiety and work worry because they held back for so long they were stubborn and they were selfish but now they're being forced to actually embody themselves and their main issue is disassociation that's why they don't they act like they don't care but it's not that they don't care they just have a lot of like negative um negative memories negative experiences around relationships and what they're seeing is that they really have a lot of fear of getting into a relationship with you because of all their past betrayal and so this person's afraid of being powerless and they do have a big ego so they are holding back also because they're prideful and they also know that you're like no more intolerance I feel like this person thought that the spiritual connection that you and them had together was going to like be enough. They were a little delusional, but a lot of narcissists are. A lot of people that need healing are. You know, narcissists is just can be like a fancy psychological word for like people that are spiritually sick, people that grew up in environments that didn't make them feel safe, didn't make them feel supported, didn't make them feel loved. Now, I'm not saying it's okay to continue to abuse a person later on in life. This is what this person is learning. They're learning like the way that they played it didn't keep anyone hooked except for themselves and hooked to their trauma because they assume that they knew who you were because you were kind you were gentle you gave this person the time so what i see is that that they're still stuck in their ego do they have guilt yes do they have regret yes do they want to be more than friends yes are they doing anything about that no because they're stuck in their ego so we have to say at this time what's the point? What are you supposed to be learning? What are you supposed to be doing? What are your wounds? Because why did you attract this person to you? Because again, this is where when you're dealing with someone that has shadows, a lot of blocks and you're like, okay, what for? Well, you integrate the spiritual lesson. That's what's for. Because you also have detachment and disassociated from certain aspects of yourself that are wounded. Otherwise you wouldn't have attracted this person into your life. And so once you integrate 
those spiritual lessons, you become more whole. You become out of this vibration of this person. You would no longer really even find this person attractive really anymore because you'd be on such a higher vibration. So the first card out is overwhelmed. And that would be obviously if you grew up in an alcoholic family or again, grew up with not really feeling emotionally supported by your parents, right? I mean, let's face it, it would be extremely overwhelming. Children don't know, they're not supposed to be parents. They have, you know, their brains aren't developed and they're being put in positions of being adults. And when that happens, you know, everyone grows up too fast and they're not paying attention to their dreams, to pouring into themselves. Instead, they're pretending that they're grown up, right? They were like getting into relationships, playing house, um, like if you grew up in an alcoholic family also like you would be the fixer you could be the fixer of the family or just not want to be seen because hey that we have enough problems i don't need to contribute to the problems i don't want to get yelled at because everyone's already stressed out so it's very overwhelming for a child again to grow up in imbalanced environments because it's going to make them feel inadequate they're going to approach everything through fear and you're going to be up in your mind with the head chatter all the time and think that no one likes you all the time because you're coming from a place of fear. That is what I feel like you grew up in, that you grew up in an environment with your family that didn't make you feel safe. And then you took those behaviorisms into the world. So relationships have always kind of not been the easiest for you because of that. Sing to find your voice. I feel like you weren't allowed to have your voice growing up. If you had an opinion, you got yelled at. You know, God said it made the world with its voice. You know, you too can make the world with your voice because you have God inside of you. And that's the gift of spirit. It's our connection to each other. It's empathy. It's our spiritual sovereignty. It's our magical energy. It's our creative genius. Okay. So spirit says, but if you're not going to be able to ask for what you need and you're not able to express yourself, well, that's going to be a problem. So or, or right here, we see again, overwhelmed a need for groundedness, sing even to be able to express oneself. Hope. I feel like when you grow up in an environment that's it's survival mode, you don't have hope. Okay. It's like you were conditioned not to have hope because you you grew up with negative parents. And again, it could be they did weren't living a spiritual life. They were living out of balance. They probably had addictions. If they didn't have addictions, then they there was um there was other imbalances such as uh not working not working and not not working enough not enough money not enough just not enough support where if you grow up where your parents are like are drinking or they, they're not working or they're not support like you don't see them being able to support themselves you are inheriting that trauma because children rely on their parents so if your parents had money issues if they had any type of imbalance where they couldn't show up for you it's overwhelming and you would again be conditioned to not really believe in hope because your hope came from yourself and you would say well i'm the, the one that's in charge here and i'm not really getting the best results and so that's how children lose hope. So to integrate hope and hope really is like faith. And faith is the bridge that connects you to what is sown to what is reaped. Okay. So if you plant corn, you get corn. It's like that. It's like, but there's a space in between and hope is what gets you there. But if you're a negative person, 
because you can't speak your truth, you can't ask for what you need, well, then people take advantage. They play games. And I feel like that's what this person kind, kind of did. And the overwhelming energy mirrored the same exact energy that you grew up in. So this would have been a trauma bond type of connection of, again, someone suppressing you. And that happens again when you grew up in an environment that didn't let you speak, that didn't let you have an opinion, that didn't let you because they had problems. You were too busy surviving. So spirit says you have to, you had to integrate. And you have to integrate first by the awareness. We have the awareness. And then we have to say, okay, well. I'm looking for my other deck. Where is my, it's like a lot of times right in front of my face. And then it's like, I still can't find it. I don't know. <laughs> okay. So we always ask God, the universe, spirit, whatever you want to call it. Um, What, how do we heal, heal this? What, because, okay, we understand why we attract did this person and I believe that you again integrated already because when you left this person you proved that you had hope like you stopped giving energy to this person so you have hope in your own life you're not saying well I'm just going to choose with like well this is the best that I can have no like you and you didn't have hope to say well I hope that this sick person is going to become different no that's the, again sometimes you see hope that way where spirits like no Hope you need to display hope for your own life. And so, and that's by getting your own voice, becoming more grounded within yourself and not letting anyone suppress you, which is exactly what you did, whether you knew that that's what you were doing or not. You integrated the spiritual lesson, which is why this person's in grief. Like I said, I kind of feel like you're the one that got away. They know that you're the one that got away. They hold back because they already know that the answer is going to be no. Like they already know that they damaged this connection and that's their karma. So when all you guys say, oh, no one, they never get their karma. It's like th this person just did. And spirit says faithfulness. I commit to my mind, my heart and my will. I am devoted to the needs of my soul. I trust myself in God and the universe and that's where you are right now. And the reason why was because you were abandoned. So it's not uncommon for children that grow up from parents that abandon them to for them to abandon themselves in a relationship, abandon their needs. So the spirit said, no, you passed the spiritual les lesson. I need you to continue to do this, to be faithful so that your energy stays on this vibration so you can now attract someone that's going to match your energy someone that's going to show you that yes you are deserving of that because you were faithful and that is the the art of integrating and transmuting and that was displayed in this story by and this that this also showed how this person your person the person that's connected to you whatever you want to call them well how they had to eat the karma and that's what it's all about in the end. Everybody learns. I'm going to leave that there, Gemini. You let me know how you resonated with this one. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.